guys, this is Jessica with Tiny Worlds of Wonder, and today I'm here to share a video that's a little bit different from the videos that I normally share on my channel. Um, as I've mentioned a couple times over the last week or so, um, I am traveling this week, and so I'm not making a lot of progress on my diamond paintings, so I wanted to fill in um, the leftover time, or the, the in-between time, with um, a video. Um, and so I thought today I might share my stash of adult coloring books and my completed pages and works in progress. So if you're into coloring, stick around. I'm going to show you my stash and what I'm working on. If you're more on the diamond painting side, um, feel free to watch this, of course, but also check back later if that's more your interest. And of course, I'll be back with lots more of those videos. But um, let's get into this stack that I have in front of me here. And I'm not going to show you this um, stack of books in any particular order. I'm just going to kind of go through um, and show you what some of my favorites are and what I've been up to. So let's stash all those over there and let's get into Imagimorphia. So this is by Kirby Rosans, and anyone out there who is into adult coloring books probably has one, at least one of the books by Kirby Rosans. I just have one of them. Um, I just have Imagimorphia, and I've really done only one page in this book, or almost done on only one page in this book. I'm almost finished with this page. It's almost a finished, <laughs> a finished piece, but not quite. Um, so I actually started this page for um, a coloring challenge in one of the Facebook groups I belong to. And um, I'm, like I said, almost finished. I just have like the top little bit across the top there. The bokeh background is done and I'm just kind of fading some blue up toward the top here. Um, but I had a lot of fun working on this one. It has taken me forever. Now granted, I don't color a lot. Um, I just sort of pull these out when I want to do something kind of artistic and zen out a little bit. Um, and I also unfortunately discovered while doing this page that I really don't love colored pencils. Like I have a big stash of Prisma colors and they're not my fave. Not that the pencils themselves aren't my fave, it's just the coloring takes so long with them and I am really impatient. So, um, but all that said, I'm almost done with this page. I'm looking forward to doing a lot more um, in this book, although it might take me my whole life. So <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. It might not, I don't know. All right, the next one I wanna show you is Sweet Shop, or The Sweet Shop um, by Chris Price. And I'm sure a lot of you also have this book if you're um, into adult coloring books. And again, in this book, I just have one work in progress. It's not even quite finished, almost finished. Um, I did this page with my um, Ganzai Tanby watercolors, and then I've just been doing some shading with my Prisma colors over the top. So um, all I have left is just the little bottom bit of shading on the soda fountain there, and then I'll be done with this one. I don't know how much I love it. I love the bright colors in it, certainly, and I've really enjoyed just kind of popping in and coloring a few candies here and there. Um, especially when I really have a sweet tooth, I'll just color some candies instead of eating them, right? Um, so that's that one, um, and I really enjoy that book. Um, our old favorite, The Enchanted Forest by Johanna Basford. Um, a lot of you probably own this book as well. This was my very first coloring book, and even though it's my first book, I don't have a lot done in this one. I don't have a lot done in any of them because, you know, like I said, I'm not a serious colorist, but this was my very first page that I finished. Um, I just did a simple pastel background. I didn't even have Prisma colors when I did this one, actually, so um, I just had, like, some basically school-grade pencils there. And then my plan was to do sort of like a summer and winter theme on this page, so... I kind of got part way through the winter side with the gradients of blues and purples here and then just got really bored. That's that's the way I live my life generally. Um, <laughs> and then I need to put some fixative on this page because um, those pastels do sort of rub off over time. But those are the only two 
finished pages slash works in progress that I have going on in this book. Um, let's see, you can see I kind of do like one page at a time. That's how I, that's how I seem to roll. So this one's called Color the Natural World um, with artwork by Zoe Keller. I got this one at my local Barnes & Noble store for like $4 and some change on the clearance rack. And I really love the pictures in here. It's got some really, really nice um, like nature illustrations in it um, that are really fun to color. And I've really only done like a little tiny sample on this page just to see how my pencils would go. And then another Prismacolor pencil work in progress over here, which I just got so bored of coloring the leaves. I couldn't even take it. But this is like um, the Northwest, the page about sort of Northwest habitats. And since I live in the Northwest, I decided to start with this one. It was really fun. These yellow slugs are really adorable. <laughs> I think they're a menace, but they're really adorable. Um, and then one day I just hopped over here and decided, since these pages are single-sided, um, to try out some of my Derwent Inktense pencils in this book. And they actually did an okay job. I mean, I, I haven't been working really hard to get a lot of shading or a lot of nuance on this page in color, but um, I did color a seahorse, which I love seahorses. Um, and then I started this lionfish. I haven't done too much with that and then this little fish over here um, but yeah the paper actually the ink tents don't blend very well in the paper but um, it actually the colors are nice and vivid so that was good um, let's move next to the beautiful Zemel Yasnova I know I'm saying that wrong probably um, by Thomas Love Tomic also saying that wrong probably, um, but this is a gorgeous book and so completely intimidating. The pictures are just so detailed and beautiful in this book. It's really gorgeous. Um, but I, like so many of these books, I've only done one picture in here and it was the cover page because I just wanted to test my ink tense pencils um, and see how vivid they would be and how the paper would take the pencils and it went great. Um, the blending isn't super easy on any coloring book page, um, but the colors are nice and vivid. So I colored this one, if you can't tell, in the style of like an old manuscript. <laughs> so I put some stains on it and some splattering and um, my favorite jewel tone colors. And I really had a lot of fun on this one. So I may be trying my ink tents out on some more of this book as I go along. But that is a gorgeous, gorgeous book. Um, let's see, what else do I have over here? I have this beautiful Minuet de Bonheur. I don't speak French, I apologize. Um, but this is a beautiful book. This is probably my favorite book in my whole stash, just by like the beauty of the pictures themselves and the cuteness of it and, oh. It's so adorable, um, but very intimidating to me. So I really only popped over here and colored some little froggies. Oh, they're so cute. I love them. Um, I just felt like coloring some frogs one day. So I did, and I didn't worry about finishing the rest of the page or anything. Now you probably notice I have some papers in my books and what those are, in addition to just some scratch paper, is a way for me to sort of save the colors that I'm using on a given page so that I don't have to worry when I come back about trying to remember like what color I did all my frogs in. Um, since I don't color a lot and that sometimes a lot of time goes by before I come back to a page, it sort of helps me keep things in my brain a little bit, keep notes for myself. I also have this page that I've started. This one I have been coloring along with um, Shirley XLY on YouTube. I think it's Shirley XLY. I'm pretty sure. Um, if you haven't checked out her channel, she is incredible. Um, Chris Chang is also incredible. Coloring with Elena is incredible. Um, there are a lot of great channels, but she's the one I've been coloring along with on this picture. Um, and I've really enjoyed 
um, watching her work on that page. So credit to her there. All right, next in the stash, The Night Voyage by Daria Song. This one was a Christmas gift from my sister and I love this book. This is another one that is so beautiful. The pictures are just gorgeous, um, very intricate, um, tells a story. It's really, really neat. That's probably my favorite page in the whole book. But of course I'm too intimidated to start it. So I did start coloring along, um, watching Coloring with Elena's video on this picture and doing a little work on the gold bicycle on this side. And then I started just on my own on the little girl and the cat over here. But I haven't gotten too far. As you can see, my book is already falling apart in the middle. The quality of this book is really disappointing, even though it's really beautiful. Um, if I was really serious about coloring, I might be super upset about that. Maybe I can figure out a way to fix it at some point. If any of you have any tips for, for how to fix pages like that, pop it in the comments below. I'd appreciate hearing it. So there's another one of my color saving pages so I don't have to remember things. I can't remember anything these days. All right, this is my newest book. This is Mouse Guard Coloring Book by David Peterson. Now David Peterson does a whole series of comics called The Mouse Guard, and this is maybe one of the most adorable books that I've ever seen. Like, it is stinking cute. Kind of like this. Some of the pages are sort of this comic book style. Some of them are just like full page pictures, um, more like traditional coloring pages. So in this book, I just have a work in progress and then a tiny tidbit of something finished. So this is one I started, um, and I did this one with Inktense pencils, and the paper actually took the water okay. There's not really any bleed through, just a tiny bit of wrinkling. Um, like with all paper, Inktense doesn't blend super well and it doesn't dissolve really, really well in this paper, but it, it does give a nice vivid color. So um, on this page, I just have the, of course, the mouse himself left to color and then his outfit, part of his outfit there in the branch he's standing on, but otherwise pretty much finished with that one. Um, and then this little guy was just sort of like my test for my ink tense pencils just to see how that would go um, and like I said it doesn't blend really really well but um, yeah but it blends okay so there he is he turned out super cute I think so I'm having a lot of fun with this book it's so so cute it's really really adorable all right last one and this book the magical city by Lizzie Mary Cullen is my accidental favorite coloring book. This is not a style of art that I would normally gravitate toward. Um, it's very free form, it's really cool. Um, but I got this very inexpensively at my local Barnes and Noble. Um, and I just thought I would give it a try. I saw Peta Hewitt on the Artistino channel color in ink tents in this book. I know a lot of you have probably seen those videos. And she does some incredible work. So inspired by her, I picked this book up for again, four or five or six dollars, I think, at Barnes and Noble. I, it's been a long time, I can't quite remember. Um, but it has really become one of my very favorite books in my stash, sort of, like I said, by accident. So I definitely have more pages done in this book than any of my others. So this is actually the very first page I colored in this book and maybe the second page I ever colored or ever finished. This is Baker Street and I did this one with ink tents. Um, and it really was just an experiment in kind of how to blend the colors on basically typing paper. So again, the, the ink tents don't blend really well, but they do lay down a nice vivid wash of color. So I really, um, I really enjoy that aspect of them. Um, I did use way too much water on this 
first page I did just because I didn't quite know what I was doing at that point. Um, so it did wrinkle quite a bit and then it did bleed through on this back page which is the shard. Not my favorite page but I really did it only to cover up the a little bit of bleed through from the page before. So those were kind of my my experiments to get my feet wet in how this paper would respond. Um, and then this page is Kovarak. Now this one, credit where credit is due, I completely colored along with Peta Hewitt on this one. It's completely inspired by her version of this page. I had so much fun doing this, um, coloring along with her. The color combos were incredible. Like I never would have thought to use this combination of colors on the building there, um, but it was just a blast. So thank you, Peta, for all your inspiration. It is, that page was a blast to do. I really, really had fun with that one. Um, then I've done, let's see, Portobello Road um, with this beautiful red building, Alice's, which is a real place. So it's kind of fun to look on Google for some reference photos for this one. Um, kind of a nighttime scene, lots of bright colors in this one. And again, I had a lot of fun. This is, I think, the second page I did in this, no, the third, after the shard. So I was still kind of learning how the ink tents would respond, but um, yeah, that one was a blast. Let's see, what else do I have done? Oh. Um, this one's not my favorite page that I finished, the Northern Lights, um, but it was a pretty quick and simple page, and yeah, I live in a place where you can actually see the Northern Lights, so um, they're always green when we see them, but it's a little artistic license there with some purple ones too. Um, so that's that page. Let's see what else I have done in here. This is my current work in progress in this book, Stockholm. Um, so doing a night scene there, it's always kind of challenging to get the ink tents dark enough in the shadows, at least in my experience, but um, it's been really fun to work on that one and look at some pictures of Stockholm and think about how much fun it would be to visit. Um, then I have Red House, Spexley Heath. Um, and this one is more of like a summery daytime kind of scene with some sunlight at the top and pretty flowers and bright green grass. This is where I want to be right now instead of in the snow <laughs> where I am. All right, and I think, I think we're at my last one here. Now this page is my very favorite page that I've ever, ever finished. I love this page. I'm really proud of this page. Um, this is Ischia, Italy, and the reference photos for this picture were just so much fun to look at with all the colorful houses and sunlight and I had a blast coloring all the little fish and boats and everything. It's so fun to just, yeah, go somewhere mentally that's completely different from where you are. So, um, yeah, I'm really proud of this page and I really, really love it. So, um, and again, all these were done with ink tents, so really vivid, bright colors and tons of fun. So that is my stash of adult coloring books, all the pieces that I've started and or finished in all of them. Um, I will put some links down below to any of these books, maybe on Amazon or Book Depository anywhere I can find them um, in case you're into coloring and you don't have any of these, um, any that are still available, I'll link there. Um, I'll also put a link to my um, set of Prismacolor pencils and the set of ink tents that I have um, and the watercolors that I use just in case you're curious. Um, yeah, so I hope you've enjoyed seeing all of these um, little mini works of art that I've had fun creating just in my spare time here. Um, thanks very much for checking out this kind of different video for my channel. I'll be back with lots more diamond painting videos um, and hopefully sharing some other crafts as well. So spread some joy wherever you are today and I will catch you next time. Bye.